Hello guys, this is Ege from the Ottoman History Hub, and today I am bringing you a updated Ottoman Sultan's tier list. So back in early 2019, I made a tier list about the Ottoman Sultans, and I think that video at this point is quite outdated. Since then, I have learned um, more about Ottoman history, and I believe my video production has increased since then and I really wanted to make this new tier list video since there are many new viewers that are coming to the channel recently due to my recent collaboration with Kings and Generals. So I think this tier list would be a good time to introduce myself as a, um, a um, aspiring Ottoman historian to um, discuss my views on certain topics about Ottoman history to some of our new viewers. Before we get started, I would first like to explain how I will be ranking each Ottoman Sultan in their own respective tiers. Firstly, I will look at their personal talents as a statesman and military leader. Secondly, I will look at their imperial ideology. And lastly, I will look at how effective their administrations were in projecting Ottoman power. And as a final note, I will link this tier list in the description below that I made, and feel free to um, write your own opinions regarding my tier list in the comments down below. Alright, first up we have Osman Ghazi. First of all, he was a great military leader, he secured the independence of the Ottoman Beylik from the Sanchuks, he oversaw the conquest of various Byzantine towns in Bithynia, and he was also a great politician when it came to gathering Ghazis getting the support of religious Sufi orders from Anatolia, and dealing with um, multiple Byzantine frontier governors. And my only con for Osman Ghazi would be that he was too military-centric, since he didn't really focus on building um, many state institutions, but overall I will put him in the great category. Next up we have Orhan Ghazi, and like his father, he was a great military leader, he oversaw the conquest of major Byzantine towns, the Kars of Beylik, Ankara, and Gallipoli, he established a new capital in Bursa, he also saw the creation of many state institutions like coinage, the Grand Viziership, and the reorganization of the army when it came to foot infantry, he was also a great politician regarding his relationship with John VI of the Byzantine Empire, and my only con for Orhan Ghazi would be that he was too idle in his last 15 years of his reign. He probably should have gone to, um, into an early retirement for his son, Shisada Suleiman or Murad. But overall, I will put Orhan in the great category, just above his father. Next up, we have Murad, and just like his father, he was also a great military leader. He oversaw the Ottoman conquest of Bulgaria, northern Greece, parts of Serbia, and parts of Albania, and western Anatolia. He effectively tripled the size of the Ottoman Empire during his reign. And during his reign, we saw many important battles being won, such as the battles of Maritza and Kosovo. He established a new Ottoman capital in Edirne. He also oversaw the establishment of the Janissary Military Corps, and in his reign, um, Ottoman architecture was really born, and it was really seen in the former capital city of Bursa. And my cons for Murat I would be that he left the Ottoman Empire too devastated in manpower after the Battle of Kosovo. He was too military-centric since he didn't really focus on building state institutions like Orhan Ghazi did. And depending who you ask, Murat I also began the practice of Ottoman fratricide during his reign. And overall, I will give Murat I a great tier ranking, and I will put him right above his father. Next up, we have Bayezid I, the son of Murad. And before I say anything else, um, Bayezid I was an outstanding military leader, perhaps the most talented in Ottoman history. He oversaw the conquest of Anatolia and major parts of Serbia and Greece. He oversaw huge victories during the Battle of Nicopolis against a large crusading host. He even saw the blockade of Constantinople and established the Ottoman Empire as a regional power. But he was a poor statesman and he alienated many Anatolian and Balkan nobility during his reign. He mishandled the Timurid crisis and he oversaw a massive Ottoman defeat during the Battle of Ankara which effectively ended the First Ottoman Empire. But with all of that said, I will still put Bayezid I in the great tier category, but right behind his father, Murat I. 
Next up, we have one of the sons of Beaz the First, Mehmet the First, and during his reign, he reunited the Ottoman Empire after a decade of civil wars. He was effectively the second founder of the Ottoman Empire. He was a great military leader. He personally led many Ottoman armies in many um, dozens of military campaigns. He reestablished partial Ottoman rule in the Balkans and in Anatolia. He suppressed many popular uprisings, such as the Shea Bedouin revolt in the Balkans. My only cons for Mehmet I would be that he failed to reintegrate Serbia and large parts of Anatolia back into the empire previously controlled by the state before the Battle of Ankara, and that he was too military-centric, and he did little to improve the Ottoman economy after the Battle of Ankara. With that all said, I will put Mehmet I in great tier category just above Murat I just because he is the sole reason why the Ottoman Empire survived into the 15th century. Next up we have Murat II and during his reign the Ottomans re-established their authority over most of Anatolia and over the Byzantine Empire and Wallachia. He oversaw the conquest of Thessalonica and large parts of Serbia and he suppressed many civil revolts. He had great military leadership against European crusaders during the battles of Varna and the Second Battle of Kosovo. He founded many educational institutions in the Ottoman Empire and invited many Islamic scholars into the empire. And also, he re-established the Ottoman Empire as a major military and economic power in the region for the first time since the Battle of Ankara. My only cons with Murat II would be that he failed in a siege in Constantinople, he was unable to suppress Skanderbeg's popular revolts in Albania, and he also left the Ottoman states in a precarious situation with his sudden retirement in 1444. But overall, I will give Murat II a great tier ranking, and I will put him at the top of the great tier list. Next up, we have Mehmet II, and he was an outstanding military leader. He oversaw the conquest of Constantinople, southern Greece, Albania, Serbia, Trabzon, Karaman, and Bosnia. He subjugated the Crimean Khanate and won huge victories against the Aquilu in 1473. He established Constantinople as a new capital of the state and began rebuilding um, the city to its former glory. He was a renaissance ruler through and through, a man of the arts and sciences, and he was interested in being a universal ruler for all faiths. He increased Ottoman prestige through his conquests and the acquirement of certain imperial titles such as Roman Emperor, and he oversaw the beginning of the codification of Ottoman law, and also the beginnings of the official Medic system that would be used in the Ottoman Empire for centuries to come. My only cons with Mehmet II would be that he alienated many for his liberal views in the Ottoman court, he left the Ottoman Empire in a physical mess, and he failed during the sieges of Belgrade, and failed in his conquest of Moldavia, and his invasion of e um, Italy, <laughs> not Egypt, and he gave way too much power to the Devshima class of statesmen and the Janissaries. With all that said, I will put Mehmet II at top tier, and personally he is my favorite Ottoman Sultan from history, and the more I learn about him, the more I get fascinated about his own imperial ideology and him as a person in general. Next up we have Beazit II, and in my opinion I think he was the weakest out of the first 10 Ottoman rulers, but he was a great state's administrator when it came to fiscal affairs, he oversaw the conquest of Akraman and the subjugation of Moldavia. He oversaw the foundation of the Ottoman Navy during the Ottoman Venetian War of 1499-1503. He oversaw the resettlement of Spanish Jews into the Ottoman Empire after the Spanish Inquisition. And Ottoman slash Tartar raids into Eastern Europe really started to um, um, commence during his reign. My major cons with Beaz II was that he oversaw a stagnant Ottoman Mamluk war, he spent most of his time in Constantinople and did not go on military campaigns like his forefathers, and he grossly mishandled the Kuzulbash crisis in Anatolia, and also grossly mishandled the political rivalry between his sons, thus sparking a new round of Ottoman civil wars. And overall, I will put the II in good tier category, Next up we have Selim I, he was a outstanding military leader, he oversaw the conquest of the western portion of the Safavid Empire and the Mamluk Sultanate of Egypt, he effectively doubled the size of the Ottoman Empire within 
a short span of eight years, he crushed the Kuzabash movement in Anatolia, he established the Ottoman Caliphate, and he filled the Ottoman treasury to the brim. My only con with Selim I would be that he used brutal methods of suppression um, towards Alevi and other religious minorities in Anatolia and against his rivals in his imperial family. Other than that, I will put Selim I in top tier category, just behind Mehmet II. Next up, we have Suleiman I, and he was a great military leader like his father and a great statesman. He led the Ottoman Empire into its golden age. He oversaw the conquest of North Africa and large sections of Eastern Europe and the Middle East. The Ottoman Empire became a major power in Europe and Asia, on land and on the sea. He won many important battles and sieges during his reign, such as the Battle of Mohaj, um, Previze, Chebe, and the sieges of Belgrade, Rhodes, and Budin, and Sevekgar. He also facilitated many great Ottoman statesmen, such as Pagli, Brian Pasha, Hayrettin Barbarossa, Turgut Reis, Pierre Reis, Abu Sud Efendi, Sukul Mehmet Pasha, and Mimar Sinan. He also codified Ottoman law, publishing the Kunan Name during his reign. My only cons for Suleiman I would be that he mismanaged his personal life regarding his imperial dynasty. We all know the stories about that. And he oversaw the beginning of the overbloating of members in the Ottoman bureaucracy, and particular with the Janissary Corps. And when it came to military matters, um, he oversaw um, a couple of military defeats, such as the Siege of Vienna and Malta. And he also overextended the Ottoman Empire and its military resources, but overall, there is no question about it. Suleiman I will go at top tier category, but in my opinion, just before Mehmet II, but just after his father, Selim I. Next up, we have Selim II, and during his reign, he basically oversaw the conquest of Tunis and Cyprus, and basically, one of the best things he did during his reign was that he entrusted the state in the talented hands of Sukul Mehmet Pasha, but that's where my pros really end with Selim II. I have many cons for him, such as he spent way too much time secluded in the imperial palace and he really was not active in state affairs at all. He also did not participate personally in military campaigns like his forefathers did before him. He oversaw many massive Ottoman defeats, such as the Battle of Lepento and the First Russo-Turkish War, and Overall, he was seen as a symbol of more decay by the Ottoman public during that time period. Overall, I will put Selim II at bad tier category. Next up, we have Murat III, and during his reign, the Ottomans saw their largest territorial reach in the Middle East. He oversaw the conquest of Azerbaijan, eastern Georgia, and large sections of western Iran, and the brief conquest of Morocco. He also oversaw a renaissance in the arts and sciences in the Ottoman Empire. But that's where my pros end with Murat III. I have many cons for him. He spent way too much time secluded in the imperial palace and was not active in state affairs. He oversaw a Ottoman economic crisis in which the state was on the verge of bankruptcy. He did little to stop the rapid decentralization of the state. His reign also saw the beginning of Ottoman stagnation and European military technology and battle tactics. He cycled way too many Ottoman Grand Viziers, which led to unorganized governments during this time period, and he oversaw the Long Turkish War, which drained the Ottoman treasury to a critical point. Overall, I will put Murat III at alright tier category. Next up we have Mehmet III, and he was the first Ottoman Sultan since Suleiman I to go on active military campaigns. He won many victories at the sieges of Igar and Nagi Kaneza and the Battle of Kuretes, and that's where my pros end with Mehmet III. I have many other cons for him. He did little to solve the Ottoman economic crisis and decentralization that began with his father. He lost newly conquered territories in the east to the Safavids, thus sucking the Ottoman Empire into a two-front war in Europe and in the Middle East. He lost public trust in the Ottoman dynasty for participating in the largest fratricide in Ottoman history, and he oversaw major military defeats to the Romanian principalities, and he oversaw the start of the Jalali revolts in Anatolia. Overall, I will put Mehmet III in alright tier category, just above his father, Murat III. 
Next up, we have Amit the First. He concluded the Long Turkish War, the Jilali revolts in Anatolia, and the Ottoman Safavid War. During his reign, he ran an effective administration. He was active in state affairs and began the process of fixing the Ottoman economy. He oversaw the construction of the Blue Mosque in Constantinople, which was a sign of Ottoman prestige. And my cons for Ahmed I would be that he was severely underqualified for the job of Sultan since he was the first Ottoman leader to not receive a governorship and a proper education due to his father's sudden death. He began the Kafi system with his brother Shisadi Mustafa. He used state funds to build the Blue Mosque instead of funds acquired from war. And lastly, he recognized territorial losses to the Safavid Empire and also recognized the Holy Roman Emperor as an equal monarch. With all of that said, I will put I'm the first in all right tier category, just behind Murat the third. Next up, we have Mustafa the first, and in my opinion, he was the worst Ottoman Sultan in the history of the empire. I have no pros to say about him. Um, for Khans, he was a puppet and a transitional ruler to various Ottoman political factions in the capital. He was mentally and physically unfit to rule the Ottoman state. He was highly underqualified for the job of Sultan since he spent most of his life in the Ottoman Kafis and he alienated many Ottoman governors um, around the empire, thus further decentralizing the Ottoman states. Overall, there is really little to say about Mustafa I other than he really deserves his spot in the horrible tier category. Next up, we have Osman II. For pros, he was a very visionary sultan who sought to reform the Ottoman military and government from the influence of the Janissaries and Devshima class of statesmen. He personally went on a military campaign against the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and he was highly active in state affairs. My cons for Osman II would be that he failed to achieve a full victory during his Polish campaign in which he would later blame the Janissaries on and he alienated many Ottoman statesmen due to his revolutionary actions and ideas against the ruling Ottoman elite and Ottoman institutions which would lead to his dethronement by the Janissaries in 1622. If Osman II reigned for perhaps another 10-20 years, I believe he would have been the, one of the best Ottoman sultans from um, the empire's history. However, there's only so much that I can rank him on due to him only reigning for 4 years, which is why I will put Osman II at the bottom of good tier. Next up we have Murat IV, he was a great military leader, personally led uh, Ottoman military campaigns against the Safavid Empire, and he conducted the Ottoman reconquest of Iraq. He diminished the influence of the Janissaries and reasserted the authority of the supply ports across the Ottoman Empire and cracked down on political corruption. And he reestablished the Ottoman Empire as a major military power. I actually have many cons regarding Murat IV, which is why I usually rank him lower than most people's rankings of Ottoman Sultans. He was very autocratic in nature, which resulted in mass executions and exiles of many Ottoman statesmen and Ottoman citizens in the capital. He gave rise to the Kadizadide movement within the Ottoman government. He caused major social unrest for his ban on alcohol, tobacco, and coffee, which decreased public support for the Ottoman Imperial Dynasty. And lastly, and I feel like this point isn't really um, showcased in other people's rankings of Murat IV, was that he almost single-handedly caused the extinction of the House of Osman, which would effectively end the Ottoman Empire. So. With that all said, I will put Murat IV at the top of good tier, but I am very hesitant in ever putting him in great or even in top tier. Next up we have Sultan Ibrahim and he entrusted the state and the talented hands of Kemal Kesh Mustafa Pasha and that's where the positives end with Ibrahim unfortunately. He um, unfortunately executed Kemal Kesh Mustafa Pasha four years into his reign, he spent way too little time. Uh, with state affairs and he was often secluded in the Ottoman palace by his mother, um, Kusam Sultan. He spiraled the Ottoman Empire into an economic crisis due to his mismanagement of the state, 
the rise of corruption and his own personal decadence. And lastly, he was really, really incompetent in preventing various political factions in the capital from overthrowing him from power. There's really nothing else that I can say about Ibrahim other than I will put him at the top of Horrible Tier just after Mustafa I. Next up, we have Mehmet IV. He entrusted the state in the talented hands of Kupruli Mehmet Pasha, thus ushering in the Kupruli era, thus ushering in an age of relative economic, social, and political stability within the Ottoman Empire that hadn't been seen since the reign of Suleiman I. The Ottoman Empire reached its territorial height in Europe during the reign of Mehmet IV. He oversaw the conquest of Crete, parts of Austria and Hungary, and sections of Ukraine. But that's where my cons for Mehmet IV end. He spent too much time secluded in the Idrna Palace, and he was not active in military or state affairs at all. The first eight years and his last four years of his reign were plagued with military defeats. Uh, major military defeats during his reign were the battles of St. Gothard, the famous Battle of Vienna, and he oversaw many crushing defeats in the Great Turkish War, and he also saw multiple uh, Ottoman defeats during the Ottoman-Venetian War during the beginning of his reign. He mishandled the Ottoman army after the defeat at Vienna in 1683, which would prove costly for the Ottoman Empire in later years. Uh, he left the Ottoman Empire in an economic and military crisis at the end of his reign, which is why I will put Mehmet IV in all right tier category, just above Mehmet III. Next up, we have Suleiman II, and his reign was pretty short. He only reigned for four years, and he oversaw the reconquest of Belgrade from the Austrians during the Great Turkish War, and he made serious attempts in trying to turn the tides of the Great Turkish War by personally taking control of the war effort from Edirne. Unfortunately, he oversaw many major Ottoman defeats during the Great Turkish War. He instituted a new round of alcohol bans in Constantinople, which um, caused social unrest in the capital. And overall, I will put Suleiman II at Batir category, just behind Suleiman II. Next up, we have Ahmed II, and he too would only reign for four years. Um, he oversaw a slow Ottoman resurgence in power on the sea against the Venetians during the Great Turkish War, but he also oversaw many major Ottoman defeats during the Great Turkish War as well in the Balkans. Overall, I will put um, the second in bad tier category. He didn't really do that much, and I'll put him right behind his um, counterpart to him on the second. Next up, we have Mustafa II. He was the last Ottoman Sultan to ever personally lead a Ottoman army during a military campaign. He began a Ottoman resurgence in military power on the Balkan front during the Great Turkish War. He oversaw decisive Ottoman victories during the battles of Ulash and Jena. He was also highly active in Ottoman state affairs, unlike his um, recent predecessors. However, he did oversee a major Ottoman defeat during the Battle of Zenta. He concluded the Great Turkish War with the loss of major Ottoman territories in Europe and um, the fiscally costly um, Ottoman invasion of Georgia after the Great Turkish War would lead to his deposition from power. Just for his um, leader actions in the Great Turkish War and his brilliant military leaderships during the battles of Jena and Ulash, I will put Mustafa II in good tier category, just above Osman II. Uh, sheesh, this video is kind of getting long. Um, up next we have Ahmed III. He oversaw major victories in the Ottoman Venetian War and Russo Turkish War. He also oversaw the conquests of Azerbaijan, eastern Georgia, and large sections of western Iran. He entrusted the state in the talented hands of Damat Irayan Pasha, ushering in in the Tulip era which facilitated a period of social, economical, and cultural stability within the Ottoman Empire. He oversaw a flourishing Ottoman economy after two decades of total war. He oversaw a Ottoman renaissance in the arts, music, and architecture as well. My cons for Ahmed III would be that he spent too much time secluded in the Imperial Palace and was not really that active in state affairs. Um, corruption and personal decadence of the sublime port was on full display during this time period, which uh, would later on lead to the deposition of Ahmed um, III. 
and he also oversaw a major Ottoman defeat in the Austro-Turkish War. Next up we have Mahmud I, and during the beginning of his reign he suppressed the revolt that um, deposed Ahmed III in the first place, and he oversaw a major victory in the Russo-Turkish War and the Austro-Turkish War during his reign. He was a competent ruler when it came to the daily runnings of states. And my cons with Mahmud I would be that he lost newly conquered territories in the east to Nadir Shah in a series of Ottoman um, Persian wars. And lastly, his reign saw the beginning of a Ottoman decline in European military technology and battle tactics. Overall, I would put Mahmud I at the bottom of all right tier category. Next up we have Osman III, and he would only reign for less than three years, but in those years he would manage a steady Ottoman state. However, due to a suspected bipolar condition, um, the condition itself caused him to act unreasonably in his personal life and in state affairs. We have some stories regarding his um, personal dislikes in the imperial haram, such as the banning of music and whatnot, but overall there's really not much that I can say about Osman III other than um, I will just put him at the bottom of bad tier. He didn't really do much to improve the Ottoman state, but he didn't really um, hurt the Ottoman state either in military or in state affairs. Next up we have Mustafa III and during his reign he entrusted the state in the talented hands of Kojirai Pasha who um, revived a stagnating Ottoman economy, but however, he spent too much time secluded in the imperial palace and he really wasn't really that active in state affairs. He grossly mishandled the Russo Turkish War of 1768 to 1774. He oversaw the loss of the Crimean Khanate to Russia during the war, which would eventually cause the Ottoman Empire many headaches during the course of the next century. And overall, I will put Mustafa III at bad tier right behind Selim II. Next up we have Abdul Hamid I. He was really active in state and military matters. He was the first Ottoman Sultan since Osman II to make a real attempt in reforming the Ottoman army. He invited many European officers to train certain portions of the Ottoman army. However, he signed the Consequential Treaty of Kuchukai Najar, ending the Russo-Turkish War of 1768-1774, and he oversaw another major Ottoman defeat during the Russo-Turkish War of 1787-1792 and the Austro-Turkish War of 1788-1791. Overall, I think Abdul Hamid I deserves to be in the bad tier category, just above Mustafa III. Oh boy, next up we have Selim III. He was really um, active in states and military matters. He was really interested in international politics, um, example being the French Revolution. Uh, he made attempts at modernizing the Ottoman army by forming the Nizam Jedid and inviting French officers to train the new army. He opened many military academies in Constantinople. He restructured um, governmental offices and reform fiscal management in the empire and began a empire-wide uh, operation to end corruption. However, um, he did conclude the Russo-Turkish War of 1787 um, to 1792 with um, territorial losses. He mishandled Ottoman foreign policy during the Napoleonic Wars and mishandled the Russo-Turkish War of 1806 to 1812 and he also oversaw the further decentralization of the Ottoman Empire and the rise of the Ayans. With all that said, I will put Selim III in good tier category, just behind Bayezid II. Next up we have Mustafa IV, and he only reigned for about a year, so there's really not that much that I can say about him. Um, he was a puppet ruler to various Ottoman factions in the capital. He reversed all of Selim III's military and governmental reforms from the last two decades, and he almost single-handedly caused the extinction of the House of Osman, which would have effectively ended the Ottoman Empire. He was really not a great ruler, as I just stated right now, and I would put him in horrible tier category just above Mustafa the first. 
Next up, we have Mom the Second, and during his reign, he ended the rule of the Ions, and he began the centralization of the Ottoman Empire. He ended the rule of the Janissaries and began to modernize the Ottoman military. He was highly active in state affairs, in which he reorganized and reformed the Ottoman government based on Western models. He opened up printing houses, centers of education, and oversaw many legal and cultural reforms. Um, all around the empire, of course, based on Western models, and he laid the foundations of the Tanzimat era. My only cons with Mahmoud II would be that he concluded the Russo-Turkish War of 1806 um, to 1812 with um, territorial losses, and he mishandled the Greek Revolution and the Egyptian Crisis during his reign. But overall, I would put Mom the Second at great tier category, the first Ottoman Sultan. Um, excluding the first 10 to um, um, appear in the first two um, tier categories and I would put mom with the second right above Murat the first but just behind Mehmet the first. Next up we have Abdul Mijit the first he oversaw the Tanzimat era and he delegated many powers to the talented hands of uh, Mustafa Rashid Pasha, Fawad Pasha and Mehmet Emin Ali Pasha he strengthened the bureaucracy of the sublime port, he oversaw the secularization of certain Ottoman institutions, he concluded the Egyptian crisis in a Ottoman victory, he concluded the Crimean War in Ottoman victory, and oversaw the Ottoman Empire entering the concert of Europe. However, um, it was also during his reign that the Ottoman state acquired its first foreign loan from Europe. He oversaw the construction of the Dolmabach Palace, which would negatively impact the already stagnating Ottoman economy and he lived a life of decadence and he had many lavish expenditures which would only worsen the Ottoman economy. Overall I would put Abdul Mijit the first at good tier category just above Selim the third. Next up we have Abdul Aziz and during his reign he continued the Tanzimat reforms, he introduced the secular Ottoman civil code, he reorganized the provincial layout of the empire, he cultivated good relations with Europe throughout his um, reign, he went on tour around the continent in 1867 I believe, and also he um, Unfortunately, grossly mismanaged the Ottoman economy during his reign, which led to empire-wide revolts. Um, the Ottoman state defaulted on their loans for the first time during um, his reign. He grossly mishandled the Ottoman response um, to many um, civil revolts around the empire. He lived a decadent life in which his lavish um, expenditures worsened a already declining Ottoman economy, and he let Egypt drift out of Ottoman sphere of influence, which would be detrimental for the empire going into the 20th century. And overall, I would put Abdul Aziz in all right tier category, just behind Ahmed III. Next up we have um, Murat V, and he would be the shortest reigning Ottoman Sultan in history. I believe he only reigned for 96 days, a um, little around 3 months, and for the majority of that time he was just a puppet ruler to various Ottoman political factions in the capital, and he was also mentally and physically unfit to rule the Ottoman state. Overall, I would put Murat V in the horrible tier category just behind Ibrahim. And next up we have Abdul Hamid II, and for some people this might be controversial, but um, before saying anything else, I would put Abdul Hamid II at the top of bad tier above Selim II, and before, um, well, before some people go um, crazy in the comment section below, I would like to um, make my case for why I believe Abdul Hamid II's reign was overall a, um, a bad um, reign for um, the Ottoman Empire. Let's start out with pros first. He um, kept the Ottoman Empire from major military conflicts for almost 30 years, thus ensuring the survivability of the state into the 20th century. He oversaw the construction of major training railways um, throughout the empire's Asian territories and he oversaw the construction of telegraph lines and electricity lines in major Ottoman cities and 
Lastly, he increased the number of public schools throughout the empire. But um, uh, that's where my positives with Abdul Hamid II end. Let's go with my cons. He concluded the Russo-Turkish War of 1877 to 1878 with major territorial losses in Europe and in um, Eastern Anatolia. His reign saw the most territorial losses in Ottoman history. He disregarded the Ottoman constitution and disbanded the Ottoman parliament. He oversaw a massive state campaign of censorship in which his critics were targeted by secret state police. His imperial ideology of pan-Islamism effectively ended the Tanzimat era and alienated many liberal Ottomans. The Ottoman economy was effectively owned and ruled by foreign credit collectors from Europe. He left the Ottoman army and navy in a state of disarray after years of mothballing the army due to his personal paranoia and he spent the vast majority of his reign secluded in his imperial palace due to that said personal paranoia. And with all that said, I would like to state again um, that I will put Abdul Hamid II at the top of bad tier category. Next up we have Mehmet V, and before I say anything about him, um, he did not have that many political powers, of course, the young, um, the young Turk revolution of I want to say 1908 or 1907 uh, basically made the Ottoman Empire into a constitutional monarchy. Most of the political powers of state went to the uh, Ottoman Parliament. So there wasn't really that much that Mehmet V um, um, could have accomplished during his reign. He was just a mere um, puppet ruler to various Ottoman political factions in the capital like the CUP um, later on in this reign. Um, he oversaw major Ottoman defeats during the Libyan War, the Balkan Wars, and World War I, and overall there's really that nothing that much I can say about Mehmet V due to his political constraints, which is why I will put him at the bottom of that tier category. And next up we have the last Ottoman Sultan, Mehmet VI, and just like uh, Mehmet V, he did not have that many um, political powers in government. But he did oversee the Ottoman defeat in World War I and the later um, um, partitioning of the Ottoman Empire. His government signed the Treaty of Severus in 1920 and actively went against the Turkish nationals in the Turkish War of Independence of 1919 to 1922. And overall, most of his reign saw the um, Allied occupation of Constantinople which meant he couldn't really practice most of his political um, powers in government. Overall, I would put Mehmet the Sixth in horrible tier category just behind Murat the Fifth, but just above Mustafa the Fourth. Wow, I did not expect this video to be this long, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know um, your opinions about my rankings and your own opinions about um, these Ottoman Sultans in the comments down below. This has been Egid Ganesh from the Ottoman History Up, signing out. Peace.